Okay, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, this is Adina here from International Empowerment and Immigrant Finance, recording for the Finance Business and Purpose podcast. I wanted to speak about five steps to achieving financial freedom. At the time um, I'm recording this, we just had the July 4th independence holiday in the US and that's always a really tricky holiday for a lot of people in our community. Um, we have a lot of folks in our community who are immigrants, who are family members of immigrants and have um, a unique relationship with the Independence Day in the U.S. Um, and I think a lot of Americans do, too, especially for this Independence Day um, 2023, we had right before some pretty um, egregious decisions come out of the Supreme Court of the United States affecting people's rights. So decisions um, getting rid of affirmative action, for example, for um, getting rid of the Biden administration's policy to try to reduce student loans. So there's a lot of suffering that's happening um, and just largely, you know, this concept of freedom in the United States today is, is a complicated one, right? Um, in some ways, we have way more freedoms here than in most other countries in the world, right? Um, but it depends who you are. And in other ways, we have way less freedoms. Like, for example, I mean, if you think about the issue of school shootings, right? Um, in other countries, that doesn't really happen, or at least not to the extent it happens in the US and for our members of our community who are from the immigrant community, whether you're an immigrant yourself or family members of immigrants, um, we know how complicated it is to think about this concept of freedom in the US, especially for those of you who don't have immigration status, who have faced um, harsh, um, harsh laws and policies in the immigration system. Um, if you've ever been told that you don't belong here or that you're illegal, right? Um, or even if you're American and you're not even from an immigrant family, but you care about how other people are treated in this country and how minorities are treated, how immigrants are treated, how LGBTQ folks are treated, transgender folks. Um, if you've been seeing how difficult it is um, for group, people from these groups to be free in the United States, that affects you too, right? Um, so it's a complicated topic. And um, in past years on July 4th, we've done some community um, polls and engagement and given people um, a platform to share how they're feeling about the holiday. And every year um, through our immigrant finance community, there's always a mixed kind of mixed emotion feeling. There's a lot of people saying how grateful they are to be in the U.S. and the opportunities that are here that they they and their family members didn't have in their home countries. Um, and there's also a lot of people, you know, expressing frustration and feeling really hurt about how unfree they really are in the U.S., given how unfair and how unjust the immigration laws are. So I want to point us to the topic of finances when it comes to freedom. Because despite all of the things I just talked about, that is one area that really is, if you can learn the right information and make the time to study it, it is an area that is available for all, I still believe. Even as someone who has my own critiques of the system, absolutely. And um, I definitely you know, consider myself an advocate. I've been advocating to improve the immigration laws in my work as an immigration lawyer for almost 10 years. And even before that, before I was an immigration lawyer, um, I very much um, know the limits and, and the challenges people face with accessing the, the systems in the U.S., including the financial system. But here's the thing. Um, everybody is able to participate in the financial system, actually. It's just not widely known how. So the how is the part that we love helping people with, especially in our work in immigrant finance and um, in our main program, Immigrant Finance School, that's where we teach people how to participate in the financial system, regardless of their immigration system, whether they're undocumented, whether they have DACA, whether they're on a visa or green card, whatever it is. Um, the short story is 
as long as you have an ITIN number, which stands for Individual Taxpayer Identification Number. This is um, an alternative number for people who do not have social security numbers to be able to identify themselves um, with the IRS to pay taxes. And it allows people, once they have that ITIN number, um, it allows you, if you don't have the social security number, to be able to have a bank account, have a credit card, take out a mortgage, invest in the stock market, start a business. Really, everything is possible if you have that ITIN number. So um, when we talk about financial freedom um, and and who like how you can do that, it's really about the education of how, learning the strategies how, and then learning how to navigate the system if you do face some barriers in the system um, in society because of perhaps your immigration status or another factor. There is a way for everybody to do this. Um, so then it just becomes about the strategy. Once you learn how to access the system and participate, um, regardless of your situation, it becomes about being strategic and smart about how you go about doing that. So that's what I wanted to speak about in this episode for five steps you can take if you do want to achieve financial freedom to start down that path and kind of big picture think think about how you would go about that. So number one um, is to get clear on your financial goals. Now I know that might sound like, okay, anybody can do that. If, if it was that easy, everybody would be financially free, right? Um, but I cannot underscore enough how important this is because it is impossible to reach a result if you don't know where you're going, if you don't have a direction of what you're going toward. We need specific goals to work toward to get those results that we're looking for. So if you leave it very ambiguous and you're just like the goal is just I want to be financially free, but you don't make it more specific and you don't break that down into specific goals with specific timelines with breaking it down all the way to what do I need to do on a monthly basis to make that happen? What do I need to do on a weekly basis to make that happen? Then it becomes really hard to actually see those goals move forward when you don't really know what they are specifically. Um, so that is a core part really of budgeting and managing money and financial planning is first of all, being clear on what your goals are. So for example, I'll give you some examples to think about and for everybody, this is going to be different and specific to your personal situation, your preferences, your goals, right? But some common ones we hear with folks we work with are wanting to um, be secure in retirement. So investing in the stock market to be secure in retirement is one. Um, buying a home, buying property is one. Um, being able to send children to college and, and start um, investing for that so that the money grows over the child's um, childhood and is is at a point when they're going to college of, of being enough, right? Um, other goals can involve being able to support family members. Maybe you have parents or siblings that are going to rely on you or rely on you now, being able to support them um, and have a plan for that to make it happen instead of just kind of winging it and things being really stressful without like a clear plan strategy how to do that right um being able to travel is one right if, if you are eligible to travel like be being able to save for vacation even if it's just traveling in you know in the area you live like going on a weekend trip nearby a few hours away with family or friends to enjoy life um and being able to enjoy life more right so getting really specific on like what are your goals and what are your top goals and narrowing those down to the really most important ones is the first step for achieving financial freedom because we need that target to work toward, right? Um, financial freedom is gonna look different for everyone, what that means, right? Um, so we gotta know what does it mean for you is the first step. The second step is to then learn how to manage money, right? Um, learning how to actually be strategic about how you use your money, how you can have every dollar have a purpose that's going toward those goals, that's going toward covering our expenses now, it's going toward enjoying life now, but definitely to the goals to make sure they move forward. That's how you start building momentum and implementing those goals. This is how we start turning the dream of financial freedom and the vision into something that actually can happen one day 
is learning the practical skills and systems of managing your money to move the money you have and that you're making to toward building those goals and making them happen, which usually does take a long period. And it does require a lot of strategy and planning to do that. If you're willing to do that, it's absolutely possible, right? Can't tell you how many people we've helped or worked with who have been able to accomplish their goals um, because they, they learned how to manage money, right? And learning to manage money can include everything from learning to budget to learning how to build credit, right? So that you have options. Um, we need to have build credit in order to do things like buy property or maybe get a car loan or business loan in the future, right? Um, learning how to pay off debt if you have debt in the way, learning how to save for, for emergencies or immigration expenses, like this all goes into the category of managing money. So that's like the, the first practical how do we start achieving financial freedom after we've gotten clear on the goal is learning the skill to manage the money to actually do that, right? And, and doing that on a consistent basis. The third um, step for achieving financial freedom is to make the big shift from saving and spending money to growing your money. Okay, so um, this is done through investing. So when your money is just sitting in a bank account, it's losing value every day due to inflation. And the only way to either keep up with inflation so the money's not losing value or to beat it so the money's growing is by investing that money so that it's grow growing at a faster rate than inflation which is not possible in the bank account. Um, so what do I mean by investing? There's lots of forms of investing. So there's stock market investing is a traditional example, but there's also investing in real estate. There's investing in a business, whether it's your own business or someone else's business. And there's investing in yourself, whether it's your own education or working with coaches um, and mentors who are going to help you get to where you want to go faster, who are going to teach you things that would otherwise take you years to learn and, and just help you collapse time so that you can get the skills and knowledge you need to go forward in your goals, right? Whatever is going to help you be in a place where you're expanding, where your money is basically working for you, right? Um, this is the big shift that we want to make. And unfortunately, we see in most personal finance education, they're not really talking about this. They are talking more about just the managing money. So they're talking about the budgeting and the saving and paying off debt and maybe improving your credit score. But unfortunately, all those, those things are really important. And we teach those things. And I just said that right before this as the second step. They don't help you build wealth. You're not going to build wealth from saving in a bank account, right? You're not going to build wealth from paying off debt. You're not going to build wealth from improving your credit score. The way you build wealth is getting in a position where your money is growing and your money is working for you. So this is how we want to move out of the space of what's called trading time for money, where the only way you can make money is by working every hour extra to make more. Instead, we want the money working for us. So that's like what investing does. All those types of investing I just explained but the most clear, tangible example is investing in the stock market, right? So when you invest in the stock market, your money is growing over time exponentially due to a concept called compound interest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Compound interest is where you're getting interest, which is like free money um, you get as a thank you from for investing as the investments grow. And then that money is earning interest. And then that money is earning interest. And that money is earning interest. So it grows exponentially. Right. And so we want to get in that position where our money is growing while we're sleeping, while we're chilling on the couch, watching TV, while we're on vacation, while we're with our family. This is how we can shift from just saving money and having it lose value in a bank account to the money growing exponentially. Right. Um, and like I said, real estate and business are other great ways to do that. If you look at wealthy Americans, most of them are doing a combination of three things, investing in the stock market, investing in real estate, and investing in growing a business. So that's the third step. The fourth step is systems. This is the fourth step to achieving financial freedom. So you can do all the things I just said. So getting clear in your goals, learning to manage money, and shifting to growing your money. 
but still face challenges if you don't have the systems to make this all effortless, right? Systems are how we streamline how these things happen, how we automate them. And I'm talking about, for example, like automating, you know, a monthly transfer from your bank account to your investment account to make sure you're investing every month consistently so that your goal of having X amount of money in 10, 20 years, whatever happens, right? Um, so this is what systems are all about. And, and our budgeting systems are really important because budgeting is, is essentially the foundation and the tool that we use for implementing our goals that we talked about in the first step, making them happen. And then the system is how we actually implement um, from the plan in the budget to happening in reality, right? To making sure that transfer happens, to making sure you remember to do X step in your plan, right? Whatever it is. Um, so, that's, so that's the fourth step. And finally, the fifth step to achieving financial freedom. This is a really big one, mindset and support. Um, now, I always say 99% of personal finance and business is actually psychology. It's actually um, our mindset, our relationship with money, um, our relationship with fear and doubt, right? And, and learning really solid strategies how to handle those fears, um, especially if you're someone who, you know, faces a lot of societal barriers. Um, this is going to be even more important if you have things working against you that you have to build a really disciplined mind to be able to do all the steps I said above and do them consistently in order to make your goal of financial freedom to happen. So there's lots of ways to work on mindset and support um, working with, you know, first of all, there's a lot of books on money mindset that are really helpful. Um, there's also, you know, many different programs and coaches you can work with to get group support, get support from coaches so that you don't have to do this alone. Right. And that you can have people helping support you on the mindset piece so that you can keep going, um, because the biggest thing that gets in the way for folks is fear and doubt. Right. I can't underscore that enough. Um, and so having that support and community to be able to keep going um, and to work past those fears and doubts and not deviate from your plan and to continue building a healthier, more positive relationship with money is going to be pivotal for you to achieve financial freedom. So that those are our five steps. I'll sum up again for achieving financial freedom. Number one, getting clear in your goals. Number two, learning to manage money. Number three, shifting to growing your money. Number four, systems to get you there. And number five, mindset and support. Uh, these are all things that we would be so honored to support you with if we can be helpful in any way. So please do feel free to reach out and book a free 30 minute consultation with us. I will put the link in the description and we look so for, we look forward to connecting with you and supporting you along the way. Have a great rest of your day and take care.